In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a more custom shaped gable roof that has some crickets in it, um, which is going to allow us to move on and explore our roof tool a little bit more and move into working with our slope arrows. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my level one floor plan and just lay out some perimeter walls that will allow us to go ahead and explore our roof tool a little further. I'm just going to use my rectangular draw mode. Just lay out all four of these walls at one time. Come back with my temporary dimension tool and just give myself a 70 foot width front to back and then let's go ahead and side to side. I want that to be 120 feet. And I'm just going to tab through, select the entire perimeter structure and just visually kind of center it within my elevation bubbles. Okay, so let's get started with the roof tool. I'm going to go to my level 5 floor plan. Actually, let's just do it right here from the site plan so that we can see our perimeter walls. Um, and we're going to come to our roof by footprint tool again. And we'll select level 5. We're still going to use our pick walls. I'm going to assign a 2 foot overhang. And let's just go ahead and drop that in here and here and and then we'll uncheck to find slope and we'll finish the sketch now we're kinda of to the point where we need to create a few guidelines so that we can begin to lay out those crickets that we're gonna have in this gable roof I'm just gonna use my line tool for this and we'll just want to make sure that we come back and delete these boundary lines that we're using and that we're creating here just to lay out things make sure that we come back and delete those so I'm just gonna come in 10 foot from the corner I'm just gonna lay that out here let's go ahead and sketch one over here on the other side as well now that I have that in place I'm just gonna go ahead and use my temporary dimensions make sure that I have this in fact 10 feet so you see I'm kinda of grabbing that node changing that to 10 feet here on this side let's make sure we have the same thing over here so make sure we're in fact 10 feet from the edge so there we go okay gonna give myself a couple more boundary lines that will be helpful here so I know I want to have a t uh, 15 feet wide cricket on both ends so there we are and let's just do that again to keep our roof symmetrical on both ends Then we're just going to come in another 15 feet. And then we'll have our center cricket here in the gable roof as well. And that's what we're kind of beginning to map out here with these boundary lines we're creating now. So there we have it. So now let's kind of come up to our modify panel. We're just going to begin to split the segment where we need to. So I'm going to make sure that we split it here and here where each one of our guidelines are intersecting the perimeter of our sketch here on the faces and down here you'll see I'll kind of need to make sure that I tab through So now we're kind of good to go. I just need to make sure because we are going to use slope arrows to lay out 
these crickets I need to make sure that I select each one of these segments that we've now created and come up here and uncheck define slope and I'm gonna make sure I do that on both sides of this perimeter sketch before we lay out these slope arrows so now we're kinda of ready to do our slope arrows which we're gonna come up here and you'll see now on our contextual ribbon since we're still in our create roof by footprint tool we're gonna just select our slope arrows and I'm just going to work my way I'm going to click on the endpoint and you'll see Revit will give me my midpoint and I'm just going to create this crooked from both edges I'm just gonna lay them all out while we're right here as well So you see slope arrows actually allow us to accomplish what we cannot accomplish simply by adding a slope to our sketch line. They allow us to create some other shapes that we may want to create from time to time where the slope is actually perpendicular rather than parallel to the sketch line. And the most important factor is to make sure that there is in fact no slope that's assigned to that sketch line that still lies underneath of each of these slope arrow. There still is, in fact, that's why we segmented the line because we do in fact still have a sketch line underneath of these slope arrows. And that's important to remember. Or Revit will give you an error. An error, I'm sorry. So now that we don't need these boundary lines, let's just go ahead and delete those. The last thing I do want to make sure that we go over is as I select these slope arrows, you'll see uh, there's two ways that you can go about specifying the slope. There's the height of the tail, which you'll see I can actually go ahead and define the height at the tail and the height at the head. Um, or you can use a traditional method which would require us to click the drop down and change that to slope and you'll see that activates down here our slope field where we can go in here and just kind of add in the slope in the traditional rise over run method that we're accustomed to. So I'm just going to leave a 912 pitch to each of these crickets as well as the gable roof and I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Lastly, I'm just going to go to my 3D view now that I can see this roof and I just want to make sure that my walls extend to roof so I'm going to tab through to select all four of my perimeter walls connected come up here and attach to top and I hope this video has been helpful for you